We have a few examples of uh, <clears throat> situations like this. Uh, it has been known for a few years that there is a significant benefit to humans to take uh, uh, doses of aspirin regularly to prevent colorectal cancer. In fact, for most people, uh, regular uh, aspirin, two, two tablets a day, will reduce your risk of colorectal cancer by almost 50%. About 87% of people fall into this category. However, there's 9% of Americans for which taking aspirin has no change in risk and might actually uh, increase the likelihood for uh, intestinal bleeding. And oddly enough, there are 4% of Americans that have an increased risk for colorectal cancer if they take regular aspirin. Uh, one of the other applications involves uh, transplantation. So uh, one of the problems with uh, transplantation is that there are never enough donors available for the uh, number of patients that need a transplant. And so other strategies are employed, and the major concern is that the transplanted organ will be rejected by the recipient. It's difficult sometimes to identify the process of rejection until it is well underway. And at that point, there are limited strategies available for controlling it. But genomics can identify the early stages of rejection long before they're visible at the cellular level uh, using non-invasive techniques, for example, a, a blood sample uh, to detect a, a kidney or liver transplant rejection. So this technology allows doctors to more flexibility in, in uh, dealing with the uh, prospects of an organ rejection. This is one of my favorite uh, applications. This is uh, an application developed for a disease called cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is one of the most common genetic disorders in individuals of European ancestry. And it is due to a one of several, in fact, there are over 2,000 different mutations in the cystic fibrosis gene, which is called CFTR. Uh, these mutations change the ability of a cell to regulate the movement of chemicals in and out of the cell through a gateway which is shown here in this uh, light gray color. So you'll see this, uh, this gateway is open. Uh, molecules can move in and out of the cell. Uh, this gateway is closed, and so no, no movement in and out of the cell is possible. Cystic fibrosis mutations result in a failure of the cell to be able to open and close this gate and control how molecules migrate in and out of the cell. One of the most common mutations in the uh, responsible for cystic fibrosis is a amino acid substitution, an aspartic acid substituted for glycine at position 551 in the CFTR uh, protein. A small molecule called Ivacaftor was identified that somehow interacts with the proteins in the membrane gate to make this gate more easily open by the cell. And so this allows the cell to 
uh, control movement of molecules in and out of it, and it corrects the defect for cystic fibrosis. Unfortunately, uh, as common as this uh, glycine 551 uh, aspartic acid mutation is, it only accounts for about 5% of cystic fibrosis patients, but it is a very effective treatment. Cerebral palsy is a neurological disorder that's uh, caused by traumatic brain injury. One of the difficulties in properly diagnosing cerebral palsy in young children is that there are a large number of other uh, neurological conditions that mimic the condition of cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy has no cure. So in young children presenting with the uh, features consistent with cerebral palsy, they may be misdiagnosed for any one of these uh, sets of what are called masquerading diseases. The problem with that is that if the nature of the neurological disorder was properly identified in these young children, for many of these conditions, there are effective treatments. So it's important to properly diagnose the causes of palsy in young children to identify those who have diseases that will be effectively treated. <clears throat> 